Chris, I want to just dive in with a question around uh, state, which is something we talk a lot about here at the Flow Research Collective. So could you tell us a little bit about how you think about regulating your own state, how you feel from a nervous system perspective before a negotiation, what is optimal from that perspective? Yeah, well, a positive frame of mind. I mean, you know, the stuff that I've read, as Stephen's written, and other places which corroborates it. I mean, you got to get in a positive frame of mind. And we're not naturally wired to be positive. Survival mode is largely negative. So how do I think of it? You know, I think of it kind of like oral hygiene. Not only is it daily, it's a couple of times a day. I mean, just because I brushed my teeth yesterday doesn't mean I don't got to brush them again today. Just because I brushed them this morning doesn't mean I got to hit it again sometime later today. Especially in these times when our survival mechanisms are being triggered even more, when survival mode is negative. Success mode is positive. You've got to consciously make the switch because your natural wiring is not there. So, and thank God that I've run across the stuff that Stephen's written about flow because it's gained us a lot of insight into how do we teach negotiations so that people maximize their outcomes so they don't leave money on the table. And it all revolves around, you know, what's your positive frame of mind because you're smarter in a positive frame of mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's super interesting. The way I've thought about it or tried to think about it is that whoever has the better regulated nervous system wins. And obviously there's a ton oh, okay. more oh, okay. to it than that. But with people that I've gotten destroyed with in the past in negotiations, they've always just been much more centered, much more calm, much more able to just hold their nerves and ride through all circumstances. So when you say, you know, it's, it's a constant battle and it's like brushing your teeth, what, what are you referring to? Are there certain practices or things that you do in order to stay in a good or optimal state of mind? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first thing I do when I get out of bed, you know, is going to be brush my teeth. First thing I got to do, I got to go through some sort of positive mind frame exercise. Now, the time I spent in California, I know it sounds nuts and berries and hugs and kisses, but look, the gratitude thing works. I mean, <laughs> you know, dial in on some gratitude, some specific reasons, you know, along the learning and accelerated learning path that we teach people to do handwriting makes a difference on your focus. So I do handwritten things that I'm grateful for each morning. Any sort of, you know, trying to maximize my mental resources is going to have to involve handwriting. I ran across an article recently talked about how much Bruce Lee kept handwritten journals and handwritten notes and meticulously written. Now, from what I know about handwriting, I know that I'm more focused, more mentally on my game when I handwrite. So I work that into my daily ritual. We work that into our training. There's a connection between handwriting and memory, too, because you're involving more Uh, senses. It's tactile. So when uh, you're writing by hand, write tactile with visual, with the auditory, especially if you're, you know, trying to write in a stylist manner, you're paying attention to the auditory, the rhythm, right? That is very, you know, I always take notes and try to like it a cool, fun shorthand for myself just because it gives it a little beat coupled with the handwriting. It just helps lock it in the memory more. It's just a mnemonic thing. We use it too at the Flurries of Collective. We teach people to do gratitude lists by hand. Do you use 10 things you're grateful for trying to really feel them? Do you do three things and turn one into a paragraph, which is the positive psychology version that a lot of people prefer? Do you vary it up? Yeah, I'll shoot for three things. Normally when I get started, they got to be little things, appreciate the little things. I'll end up with more than three and a number of much broader things. As what I'm trying to cycle into, what I am cycling into my day now is revisited in a handwritten fashion a couple times through the day. Ideally, a theme for the day emerges. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's neat. Mm. That's really interesting. So it's an on, kind of like an ongoing journaling practice throughout the whole day. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. You know, and ideally each day, I've always had a trouble distinguishing days because I get so up in my head. Like, I don't remember when that happened. Could have happened a week ago. Could have happened six months ago. So I'm trying to slow time down to some degree. by mm. getting more present in the day. And if the day can suggest a theme for the day, like today has opened my mind up. Just open up, if you, you know, which is get out of my head a little bit more, open more to the day. Let me hear what's in today. I love that. So that uh, it'll be a unique day. Yeah, very interesting strategy to try and shift the perception of time passing.
If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple, Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.